I'd like to demonstrate the process of extracting the contents of a CloudStack volume that's backed by a SolidFire volume to a QCOW2 file. Now before I get into those details, let me quickly run through my infrastructure to give you an idea of what I'm dealing with. I have just a single zone, single pod, a couple clusters. One of them is a KVM cluster, the other is a Zen server cluster. Now I'm going to be focusing on KVM here since uh, we're dealing with QCOW2 files, but my uh, Zen server cluster, just for simplicity's sake, so we can just see uh, VMs related to KVM, I've got all of my system VMs on my Zen server cluster. So you have two hosts in each of those clusters. I've got a few different primary storages. The one, and I'll click on the view all button, the one of main interest here is this second row in the table, SF-1. This is primary storage that's based on the SolidFire storage plugin. In this case, I've added this as zone-wide primary storage. So that is a, a somewhat unique capability. But beyond that, what we have here is an implementation of what's known as managed storage in CloudStack. So every time I spin up a VM, for example, and I need a root disk, and CloudStack has determined that it wants to use this primary storage, we will create a SolidFire volume on the SolidFire storage cluster to support that root disk. Same idea with data disks. If you decide you want to create a volume, attach it to your VM, and CloudStack determines it wants to use this primary storage based on storage tagging, that will lead to the creation of a SolidFire volume to back that virtual disk that's being used as a data disk. And uh, to make use of this, we're going to go off and create a virtual machine whose root disk resides on a SolidFire volume. Now let's take a look in service offerings. I've already got one of these set up. If I click on the name, we can see here some um, standard characteristics, the number of CPU cores, the megahertz rating, the amount of memory. What we're mainly interested in seeing here is the minimum IOPS and the maximum IOPS. So once I spin my VM up and we take a look at the root disk that's on the SolidFire cluster, it's going to have 2000 4K min IOPS and 6,000 4K max IOPS. Now let's go ahead and create this virtual machine right now. I'm going to click on the Instances tab in the upper right, Add Instance. I'll use a template. I'm going to use a KVM template and we'll just leave the uh, default root uh, disk size, which I believe for this particular template is 8 gigabytes. I'll click on the next button. I've only got the one compute offering, so I'll leave that selected and click on next. I won't worry about a data disk, but we could do this. I'll click through affinity network SSH key pair. I'll provide a name for this particular VM and click the launch VM button. Now this will take a moment to set up and I'll come back when this is done and show you the results. The process of creating our virtual machine has completed. Let's go over to the SolidFire GUI and take a look at the results. I'll go ahead and hit the refresh button here just so we make sure we have the most recent data. Now we can see here we have a new SolidFire volume with the name root-9. If we go over to the CloudStack GUI and go to storage, we can see that the only CloudStack volume we have is named root-9. In fact, I'll click on this name and we can scroll down a bit and see that CloudStack sees it as having 2000 min IOPS and 6000 max IOPS, which is consistent with the compute offering that we used when we spun up this VM. And if we go over to the, cloud, the SolidFire GUI, again, we can see over here 
that the solid fire system also has listed 2,000 min IOPS and 6,000 max IOPS. So this all looks great. Let's go back to the CloudStat GUI, to the Instances tab. I'll click on the name of this virtual machine and click on View Host. Now we can see here it's on CloudStack-KVM3. So if I switch over, I have a virtual machine over here uh, running Windows so I can have my uh, vSphere client application running and pointing me uh, through console windows to my virtual machines within it. I have, in this case, a virtual machine called KVM1. Now this is the host that CloudStack is referring to. This is the host that's running the virtual machine that we just spun up. So we can see here, in fact, we do have the virtual machine i-2-9-vm. If I click on this and then go to Open, click on the Information tab, and go to my one and only disk, we can see here we're pointing to an iSCSI target. Now let me exit out of here, go over to a command window, and I'll go ahead and run ls-l and point to dev disk by path and we'll see what we have in terms of some some disks. All right, the top three are uh, first one is basically our disk and then the next two are the two partitions within the disk. Um, long story short, this looks great. This is a, a reference to our iSCSI volume that exists on the solid fire cluster. So let's say we've, we've used this VM for a while and we decide we want to actually export the contents of the data on this root disk, which is actually on a solid fire volume, to a QCOW2 file that would be accessible to us through some kind of URL. What we do here switching back over to my Chrome browser, clicking on the Instances tab. The first thing we have to do from CloudStack's point of view is actually shut the virtual machine down. So over in the Quick View column, I'm just going to go ahead and say Stop and OK. Now it'll take a moment for the uh, virtual machine to shut down gracefully, and when that happens, I'll come back and continue the process of how we export its data to a QCOW2 file that's accessible through a URL. Our virtual machine has stopped, so let's go through the process of exporting its data. What I need to do is uh, first go over to the Storage tab, click on the name of the volume, and get a hold of its ID. Just go ahead and copy that. Now I'm going to switch over to a command prompt window and I'm going to use Cloud Monkey. Cloud Monkey is a tool which allows us to make use of CloudStack's API, much like the GUI does, but this allows us to access all of the various APIs that CloudStack has to offer. The one that we're interested in here, and I'll go ahead and kind of uh, move my cursor over it, is called Extract Volume. And the parameters it requires First are the ID of the volume, which I'll go ahead and paste in right now. Second, it has this mode parameter. Now, after I did some research into this, it actually looks like the two different options, the one is FTP underscore upload, the other one is HTTP underscore download, which I'll just go ahead and stick that in here, HTTP underscore download those actually end up being um, really the same result here. In the end, what will happen is we'll get a URL, which is in this case an HTTP URL, that allows us to download the contents of the QCOW2 file which we create. So perhaps at one point CloudStack was implemented to have a couple different options here. The takeaway is that you do have to provide either HTTP download 
or FTP upload for the mode parameter, but they both actually lead to the same result. So in this case, I'm just going to leave what I have here, HTTP underscore download. The last parameter is the zone ID. Now I was working on extracting QCOW2 files for other uh, virtual disks prior to this video, so I actually have the zone ID already uh, in place here. But normally you could just get that by going and taking a look at your, your zone and finding the ID. So actually just to demonstrate that process, if I go over to the CloudStack GUI, infrastructure, view all under zones, take a look at the zone name, and then just grab that zone ID. So great, we've got everything we need at this point. The virtual machine is stopped, so we can go ahead and begin the process of exporting this data to a QCOW2 file, which will reside on secondary storage within CloudStack and we will be given a HTTP URL which enables us to access that QCOW2 file. So I'm going to hit the enter button here and begin this process. Now this can take a little while so I'll stop the video and resume once the process has completed. The process of exporting the data has completed. We can see we have our results which I'll go ahead and highlight. In particular, we're interested in this parameter, this value of the URL parameter. I'll go ahead and copy it and switch over to my browser and paste it in. Now this is a link which is pointing us to my secondary storage VM. Now that will actually retrieve the contents of the QCOW2 file from the secondary uh, storage, which is an NFS server. I'm going to hit the enter button, and we'll see here I've begun the process of downloading this data. Now in my case, I actually don't want to wait for this to download, so I'm just going to hit the cancel button. Let's take a look and see in a bit more detail how this is implemented from CloudStack's point of view. I'll switch over to my Zen Center GUI, which is pointing me <coughs> at my Zen Server cluster, which was hosting my system virtual machines. Now, one of those virtual machines is the secondary storage virtual machine, which is highlighted right now. And if I switch over, which I'm already there, to the var www html user data folder, and if I look at the contents of it, we can see that I have a file which is actually a symbolic link and it's pointing me to another file which is actually uh, which actually resides on my NFS server which is where my secondary storage data is housed. So um, this on the secondary storage virtual machine is really a symbolic link pointing to a QCOW2 file that exists on my NFS server, which is my secondary storage. Now let's take a look at that secondary storage. Now that's in a different virtual machine. I'll click on that. And I've got this set up already where I'm at the proper volume, which happens to be ID 18. So if you were to look in the CloudStack data, uh, the CloudStack cloud database in the volumes table, you'll see that the CloudStack volume whose data we were exporting, that CloudStack volumes ID, not the UUID, but just the ID is 18. And so that's how on secondary storage this information is organized. So we can see there's a volumes folder, and then within that, I have a folder called 18. And if I take a look at the contents here, in this case we should see just a single QCOW2 file. And this is the QCOW2 file that was being referenced from that symbolic link on the secondary storage virtual machine. So that pointed to another location on the secondary storage virtual machine 
which was really just a pointer to this QCOW2 file on this NFS server. So this is the data that I was downloading through my browser when I took the provided URL and executed it. And that's really it. So this is the process of extracting the contents of a CloudStack volume that's backed by a SolidFire volume to a QCOW2 file and then getting access to it through a URL that's provided to you from the CloudStack API. Thanks for watching.